five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And I sing. Hello, everybody. This is Alex Bennett. This is the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight. Right now, we're going to check in with an old friend, ladies and gentlemen, the lovely, the attractive. You've seen him on TV. And I don't know how to introduce you anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Larry, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Yes, if you've seen him on TV. Remember when TV actually used to be kind of a big thing? Now, no, yeah, yeah. Nobody watches it anymore. As seen on TV. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that old-fashioned thing? Yeah, yeah. Do the television people know that they aren't relevant anymore? I would... Yeah, I would think, like, uh, the big broadcast networks, they got to be feeling like they're nothing unless they're totally delusional. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they better get themselves a podcast. I mean, <laughs> it's like it's not working. In fact, nothing's, w- nothing's working in show business. I mean, if you say, well, everything's gone to the Internet and podcasts and so on, well, there's so many podcasts that none of them mean anything. You know? Exactly. I read there's there's like six hundred thousand podcasts in America, and a hundred and fifty of them make money. Maybe, and they're usually associated with big corporations like CBS, where they can promote it on their networks. You know, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, it, it, yeah, you're absolutely right. You, you, and and uh, this is one of them, by the way, that isn't making any money. Okay, so let me just make that uh, abundantly clear. Because nobody wants to listen to old people. <laughs> they were hated. <laughs> I'm thinking of starting a whole network called Nobody Wants to Listen to Old People and have it just inhabited by old hosts, you know? <laughs> That'd be a good idea. You know, and we'll just sit there, because every one of us is going to say, well, you know, I got to go to the doctor yesterday. Right? The reason why we're only, we're, we usually do two of these in one day with bubbles. We're only doing one is because he has to go to the doctor. Of course. You know, you hurt, you hurt your shoulder? Yeah, I fell down last month, and it's not getting any better. So. Hmm. That's you know why that is. Because I'm old. That's right. Thank you. Bingo, bingo. You uh, nothing heals like it used to. Nothing heals like it used to, uh, and uh, you know you keep getting uh, uh, what do you call it? You keep getting bad, worse and worse. Uh, 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 What's the word I'm looking for here? I'm see that's how old I'm getting. Uh, you, you you just keep getting worse and worse information about your body. You know. Um, oh wait a minute, we just lost him. What happened? Well, I have to call him back. I guess that's what you do. Here we go. Here we go. It's ringing. It's ringing. It's ringing. Let's see. Wow. Uh, yeah, you just all of a sudden you just went. <laughs> you know. Even. Our bodies are falling apart on our cell phones. And our, and cell phones are falling apart, too. No, it's just that, you know, you keep getting bad information about your body constantly, you know. So, uh, like today, I think my wife uh, went to the doctor because her ankle was hurting. It's arthritis, and it's in the heel, oh. and uh, oh. insurance doesn't cover a steroid shots in the heel. <laughs> You ready for that one? Doesn't cover that. Wow. Now, now, you see, this is what old people talk about when they talk. When they get together and they have some dinner together, the topic of conversation always comes around to, well, I went to the doctor yesterday. <laughs> it does. <laughs> or how much is your, in- how good is your insurance? You know, it used to be, did you get laid? You know, but it's not that anymore. Uh-huh. Yeah. We used to talk about, uh, when we were talking about powder, it was cocaine, and now it's Metamucil. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, uh, I've been having some medical, you could call it an issue, but it's, uh, what I hate about it is, if you get cancer, don't tell anybody. 
And here's the reason why. Because they know nothing about cancer. And so when you say cancer, what's the automatic reaction? you got to get that out. Or, oh, my God, you're going to die. Yeah, you know? exactly. Well, I've got a cancer which, oh, my God, I'm not going to die. Okay? Not going to kill me. Uh, in fact, the doctor yesterday said, yeah, with these two treatments we're going to do, we'll probably get all of it. You know? And I'm going... It, it, but then I put it up on my site, on my on my Facebook page, and I go like I'm taking the night off because I have to have a surgical procedure for you know a minor surgical procedure, and everybody's writing, "Oh my God, good luck, Alex. I hope everything's <laughs> going to be fine with you. Oh my God, the world's falling in. You've got what? You've got cancer? Oh my God. Well, you know, I've got prostate cancer, and at my age, it ain't no big deal. You know, they, they give you radiation. And that's kind of like taking a pill, you know. And then then you're okay for the rest of your life, which may be about three and a half minutes. So, you know, I mean, the, the happy news is you're going to die of something else. Oh, thank you very much. I'm very happy to hear that. Do you have any idea what it's going to be? You know, so I keep, I keep wondering what's going to get me. So I, I asked the doctor, is this going to kill me? And he looked at me and he went, no. He gave me this dirty look like, don't be silly, you know. So and it was, uh, was it a painful procedure? Oh, this procedure? Oh, this thing they did was, uh, this is a pre-thing for radiation. But uh, they, they go in there and they uh, put th three or four gold markers on your prostate. So now I'm, I'm um, Mr. Gold Prostate. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, then they also put what they call a spacer between your, your rectum and your prostate so that it doesn't get radiated. Uh, and then I go in for like five episodes of these radiation treatments, which are rather minor because they only take about uh, 45 minutes tops from the time you take your you get in there and they put you, get you all ready and everything by the time it's over. And um, very simple procedure, only five of them. It used to be it was like two months worth, five days a week. And now it's down to five days. And uh, then after that, uh, this guy's going to implant seeds in my prostate, which will cause a few more side effects than the radiation does, uh, but not anything severe. Uh, and that's about an hour. Uh, of uh, rate of uh, what do you call it of surgery and then i'm in and out you know and then that's it go home get better you know go dive something else yeah so it, it it's all very simple so folks don't worry yes i've got prostate cancer and i can use it as a great excuse like when the girlfriend says to me will you take out the garbage i go no i have cancer <laughs> I'm too weak. I have cancer, right? You know. And and you can always use that to board the plane early too. Yeah, or in an argument if you're having an argument with, with her. You know, so, please. I have cancer, right? You know. So uh, everybody respects cancer for some reason. You know. So yeah, it's one of the things. Like there's certain words you're really not supposed to say during a comedy. Set, and the cancer is always one cancer is one of them. I, I never heard a comedian use the word cancer. Yeah, you know. Here, here's the thing, though. Um, um, I, uh, I I find that that people don't understand that there are various kinds of cancers, and there are some that are very manageable. This is the second most manageable of the cancers. The first being breast cancer, where they just lop off a breast. Okay. But prostate cancer is the second most uh, curable. And um, uh, it, it, especially at my age, it's not a death sentence at all. Meanwhile, if you get pancreatic cancer, say goodbye to everybody. Yeah, you, rather quickly. Yeah. So don't, you know, when you hear prostate cancer, when you hear cancer, it's not always the same cancer. Cancer is an umbrella term for, you know, Unusual growth in some area of your body. And prostate is the easiest to take care of, especially if you get it early. 
And I said to him yesterday, is it spread outside my prostate, do you think? He says, nah, not at all. So don't even worry about it. So, uh, you know, it, 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 but here's the thing that got me yesterday, and I probably talked about this already on the show, or maybe I'll run this uh, the same night and then I can tell it again, is that the procedure I had was about 10 minutes, okay? So oh, they take me, in, but they put me out, you know. Uh, so they put me out, and it takes 10 minutes. The setup for it, in other words, going through the process of getting through the hospital takes about two hours before you get into the operating room, okay? And then after you leave the operating room, you you have about another at least hour, hour and a half of recovery for a 10-minute procedure. Jesus. You know, I was there from like 2 o'clock in the afternoon till 6.30 at night, and only f- 10 to 15 minutes of that was him actually shoving something up my ass and fixing me or something, or getting me ready. <laughs> you know, and this wasn't even a corrective surgery of any sort. You know, this was just, we got to go in there, put this gold in there. You know, there, by the way, my prostate has become a pin cushion for doctors. Okay, between, <laughs> the, between the biopsy... And the uh, and and this thing the other day, I mean, I've got more. I they keep poking it, poking holes in it, and uh, they don't have to worry about cancer. This, this isn't going to work anymore, you know. So, anyway, that, that's well, my. Well, your story. prostate's worth a fortune now. Yeah, I wonder how much gold is in there. I, I, you know, he said he put gold markers. It's it's like for the radiation to tell where to go on the prostate and. You know, take care of stuff. So he just said, this is just a setup for my radiation. You know, this isn't even the big radiation thing. And then I go in and we have what's called a rehearsal. Uh, and it's, that's when they decide they make a little bed for me to lie in. And I, uh, uh, you know, they, they position the thing. And I think they look at me under a CT scan to see where how exactly the prostate is so they can then decide where the radiation is going to go. And then I come in and do the five uh, treatments. So that's it. That's it. And then the seeds. And how long were you out? I was maybe, I probably, I was out for 10, 15 minutes. That was it. But when I woke up, I, you know, I didn't know what was happening. I was just kind of a little, I was some, a little groggy. Um, um, I have had this, this is like the stuff that killed Michael Jackson, you know, the propofol. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and uh, it's the go-to anesthetic for operations because I think it's the best probably. It's just controllable. And when you stop feeding it into the person, the only thing that was terrible this time is I, he had to go through a vein in my hand, okay, because I have the no veins in my arms, okay? Uh, be a lousy junkie. Uh, and uh, where he did it, he says it's going to burn a little bit when the stuff goes in. It, my hand was killing me. It was just in pain until he said, "Oh, wait, let me put some numbing agent in there." And he put some numbing agent in there, and it slowed down. And then all of a sudden, I went out anyway. He said my last words were, "Oh, I think it's working." I think that was my last <laughs> words. And then it's like uh, they edit ten minutes out of your life. It's it's like okay. Yeah, let's, it's not it's not like you're asleep or where you dream. It's just like you're gone. Well, no, the next thing you know is you're waking up. Yeah, and they're picking me up and putting me on a on a gurney, and then they're wheeling the gurney down the hallway to the recovery room, where I lie there still all plugged up to the saline and everything else. But the worst part, and I'm sure I'm going to either tell this story. You see, I don't know if I'm writing this tonight or tomorrow night. Uh, probably tomorrow night, so I will have already told the story. But the worst part about it is they give you a kind of a, a jar, or what can we call it? It's a jar with a hole of the size of a penis, okay? And they say, you can't leave the hospital until you've peed at least 100 liters or something like that, up to the first line. Now... I don't know about you, but do you ever go to the doctor and he says pee in the in the cup and you can't go? Mm-hmm. And you know why you can't go? Because you suddenly get what's called a shy bladder. Now, try doing it and knowing 
that if you um, don't do that, um, that if you can't pee, you're not leaving the hospital. So now you the pressure's on to pee in this in this jar. And I'm just dribbling it in. I mean, <laughs> a little bit at a time. And I almost got it up to 100. Almost got it up to 100. But I said, is this enough? And she said, yeah, you're peeing. Get out of here. But I said, what happens if I never pee again? I said, do I have to stay here forever? <laughs> you know. I mean, it was just it was ridiculous. So well, the, then they get the yeah. They always make sure you got to pee, otherwise you got to get the catheter. But the, I'm lying there. I'm going. So I'm, I'm I'm coming out of the anesthetic, and I said, so how long do I have to stay here? Because I could very well just get up on my two feet and walk away. Okay. They say, oh, it'll, about an hour. And I'm thinking, I just had a 15 minute operation, and already this whole thing's taking me, you know, four or five hours. It's ridiculous. So anyway, I can hardly wait for the uh, the seed implants. Uh, <laughs> that takes an hour. Probably be there for twenty five hours or something, waiting to get see, out of there. See, be knocked out for all of these. Mm -hmm. For those be knocked out. Not for the radiation, but for the uh, the, the uh, seeds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this is the same guy that did Rudy Giuliani. Uh, years ago and saved his life damn it <laughs> so this is uh so this is what michael jackson used to sleep on <laughs> yes this is what he used to sleep on that's uh, unbelievable but you know something uh, what i don't understand is why he even did it because he may have felt it put him to sleep but i gotta tell you I, it's not like it's not I don't think you're getting rest it, it, out of it. Yeah. yeah, it's not restful sleep. It's not like I'm going to go snore and I'm going to dream and do all of that. Uh, when I woke up and I went home, I went to bed at the usual time I always go to bed. So obviously there was no rest involved in that. Get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know why in the world uh, he ever uh, ever did it, you know, uh, why that was his... If he felt that that was giving him rest, it wasn't. So, you know. But anyway, we got... So what? We lost a washed-up singer. Okay? So... <laughs> the most, didn't he sell the most albums of all time? I don't know. Did he? I think so. And I just... Uh, I was thinking about him, like, when you look at <clears throat> talent-wise, he wasn't a great singer, right? He was he was okay. He was fine. Okay, yeah. but not great. He was um how can I put it? Um he was kinda like James Brown. He kinda riffed, you know. I mean he kind of had a beat that he uh, sang to. Um and uh I mean he was he was he was he actually if you listen to his voice it was pretty clear and clean at one point. You know, so Whatever. I'll tell you what I was doing. I was listening yesterday as I was waiting for all this to happen. I was listening on my uh, iPhone to uh, Frank Sinatra and his. There's a there's a, a a version of the duets album which was like his last album, mm -hmm. where he just it's just the tracks of him singing alone, because later on they inserted all the other singers. Okay, boy, was he horrible. I mean, at, God, at the end, yeah. I, I wished I could always sing like Frank Sinatra, and in the end, I could. Could, <laughs> you know? I mean, it was it was just amazing how bad he had gotten, and I I I said, you know, I mean, you look at a guy like Tony Bennett, you know, you can hear that he's he's kind of he, he he's lost a lot of strength in his music. But he still is able to sing. He's still able to belt it out. You know, he's not embarrassing. All right. Well, do you think? Do you think Frank knew that he was bad? Oh, Frank knew it when he retired, and then he taught himself how to how to re-sing so that he could get some of that stuff out. But it, he was never as good when he came back as he was when he left. You know, but it was all that drinking. You know, it was all that lifestyle that fucked up his voice. He didn't. He didn't. He he liked to think he respected his instrument, but he didn't. His his idea of respecting it was taking tea and honey, 
before he went on stage. And I'm sorry, you know, I mean, you, there are a whole bunch of other contributing factors. And if you're a drinker and you're a smoker and so on, all that goes, you know? Um, so uh, it, it's not a, you know, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. Poor, poor Frank. I just, you know, because I, I listened to his early stuff and I go, my God, what, what, well, not the early stuff, the stuff in the 50s, 60s. He, what control, what style, what ability, you know? And then to hear that just completely gone on his last album is just, it's sad. It's just yeah, it's sad. Like, it's like an athlete that stays too long in a game and... Yeah, exactly. But it, but worse than that, because this is just purely embarrassing, because they're at a point where if anybody sang that badly at an audition, they wouldn't hire him. <laughs> you know, the fact that he was Frank Sinatra seemed to matter, but, I mean, it was bad. And uh, that, that, that kind of depresses me, you know. I'll tell you what yeah. else depresses me is, is, like, I had a friend die a couple of, about a week ago. Saw him about three hours before he died in the hospital. And, you know, two days later, we're dumping dirt on his coffin, as is the Jewish tradition. And um, it just, it kind of made me think about immensely talented people or immensely uh, competent people or people or philosophers or whatever. And all of a sudden, one day they die. And all that they were doesn't exist anymore. And so, therefore, what was it all for in the first place? Do you ever get that feeling? Oh, yeah, that it all, comes, it all means nothing. It all means nothing. At the end, somebody's going to be dropping dirt on your coffin, you know. Uh, and, and all your life, you, you try to accomplish stuff. You try to become the best at what you are, like you're a comedian. You try to become the best at that. And then all of a sudden... It doesn't mean anything. And then as the years go by, you suddenly become a speck in history and nothing mattered that you did, you know? Yeah, I was talking to somebody about uh, Dana Carvey. He was saying about it's a, these, you, these actors that have these amazing careers and make dozens of movies, and when they're dead, like, they're so quickly forgotten. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, it, it, well, because life goes on. People don't, you know, I'm not sitting here moaning the death of Frank Sinatra, for instance. You know, he's dead. Um, you know, nothing and, more ephemeral than show business, I and, guess. And by the way, my friend Shecky brought something up one day when we were, we were talking about Paul Newman. And he said to me, you know, there are people right now who don't remember who Paul Newman was. Sure. And you, you find that incredible because in your life, Paul Newman was a major actor. Uh -huh. you know? And now that he's dead, eh, doesn't matter. Goodbye. See you later, Paul. We're getting on with life here. Yeah, so you might be remembered by a few dozen film students, and that'd be it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, I mean, it's, 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 kind, of, it's kind of sad, you know. I mean, so I, I've, I've been in this mood lately. And then we have, like, our friend uh, Will Durst, you know. One, one stroke and all your abilities completely wiped away. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, you know, I hear he's doing okay, though. I hear he's in a re I, rehab. The last I heard, what I think he's getting out of the hospital and getting ready for the rehab. Yeah, he, no, he is in the rehab now. I just heard from oh, great. Debbie. He's in the Jewish home, which my mother was in the Jewish home for the aged, so I don't think it's the same place. But it's a place called the Jewish home, and if it's a Jewish home, it's, it's pretty good, you know, because all their sons are doctors. Uh, so, <laughs> you know. Uh, but 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 you go what you know he spent a whole career really trying to excel you know uh, he never gave up trying to excel writing and 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 doing his his skits and sketches and then all of a sudden one day he gets a stroke and he can't do it anymore what's that all about yeah thanks god yeah yeah thanks a lot god yeah who is this god anyway I think somebody said. I think it was, that was in <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, in, in which they said there were these three books, and one was something like, you know, um, uh, 
24 feelings about God, blah, 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 about God, blah, 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 about God in his fourth book. Who's this God person anyway? You know, so. Anyway. Hey, listen, we're uh, we're kind of running out of time. We've got about 40 seconds here for me to. Okay. So, so you, everything's good with you outside of your arm, all right? Everything's good, yeah. So uh, looking at 2020, uh, mm-hmm. trying to find something positive about it. Mm-hmm. Who's your Who's your medical provider? Kaiser. Oh yes, uh, or as you once described them, doctor assisted suicide. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hope they don't remember that joke when they're working on you. I know. <laughs> anyway, hey, let's talk again next week. Okay, talk next week, sure. Ladies and okay. gentlemen, he's wonderful. He's terrific. His name is Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And there was Larry Bubbles Brown. Don't we love Larry Bubbles Brown? We all love Larry. Everybody loves Larry. (laughs) Am I too bright tonight? I don't think so. Am I? I I don't care. Am I too bright? Let me see here. Let me just adjust my camera. See, I should do this before I go on the air, but I don't do it before I go on the air, so then I have to do it while you're here and you see me doing it. Um, i got to wait for that to come up. There we go. And then we go here. Uh, we go down here, and we say this one. See, and all of a sudden, I will, there I go. See, I'm, it's, it's like the old days, right? Uh, and then uh, I, uh, I go up here and I say, well, I want the widescreen. Okay, so do that. There we go. And then I go over here, and did I change it? No, it's the same as it was yesterday. It just looks a little on the brighter side. There we go. I just want to get it just right. It, for people who are not watching this program, you have no idea what I'm doing. All right? So anyway, let me uh, turn on the, uh, let me get the Skype going here. How long is this going to take? Yes, last night it took forever for it to come up. Um, and I'm sitting here, and it's bouncing up and down in my thing. You know, everybody has a Mac knows what I mean by the bouncing. Yeah, it's bouncing, it's bouncing, it's bouncing. It t- it's taking longer now to do it than it used to take. Let's see here. I'm waiting. Okay, it should be coming up now. It stopped bouncing. There we go. Now it's circling, and then finally, here we go. <sighs> yeah. Okay, I got it up. I should see. I should. I would do this ahead of time. By the way, we're you know we're online. If you want to call, uh, uh, it, it, the, the I have this this problem uh, that I don't want to turn on the phone, uh, the Skype before the before I go on because some people have a tendency to call, and uh, that's uh, that's a problem. Now some people are trying to call, and it says they got it. I we missed the call. Oh, well, here we go. Here goes Charlie. Okay, there's Charlie. Okay, here we go. Uh, uh, Charlie, uh, since you were on okay. last night, you already have a spot. Okay, in our uh, sure. in our thing. Let me uh, let me do this and bring up Kathleen. She's going to be in the uh, in the. Uh, let's see here. Cancel. Uh, let me bring her up in the number one spot. Put her up at the top. Since she's a lovely blonde, blonde broad. Yeah. Brond. Bron, blonde, 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 yeah. Anyway, there we go. Let's see here. There hey. we go. Okay, now let me put you all on screen so people can see you. Uh, yes. Oh, here comes uh, Josh Wheeler, son of a bitch. Josh son is calling. Bitch. Son of a bitch. Yeah. yeah Don't forget calling. you're on air, light. Oh. Oh, really? Oh, boom. There we go. Uh, see, I have to do that. If I don't do that, you know, girl, gr- gr- girlfriend gives me a bad, bad time. Oh, wait a minute. I, Josh isn't here. Um, uh, he was called, but he, he didn't get on. So we'll just uh, wait for him to call again. And uh, we'll, uh, oh, wait a minute. It says Josh Wheeler has joined. There we go. So let me take Josh and put him on and give, give him a place here. Oops. We're getting, Josh, we're getting some kind of, uh, everybody make sure they're not feeding back. Uh, Phil Meyer is calling now. So usually if I have to do this at the beginning of the show, it's just a pain in the ass. And then we get them all on and life is good. 
Uh, there's scuba diver. Okay, there's uh, Phil. Uh, don't, don't put me in the wet spot. <laughs> no, don't put you in. Don't put you in the wet spot. Did you say? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Okay. Everybody well, else knew what it was. Oh, I see. Okay, here we I go. Know nothing. <laughs> Wait, me. Don't put you in the wet spot. <laughs> Well, you were, you were putting this one in spot one, that one in spot two. I said, just don't put me in the wet spot. Yeah, well, let me see here. Yeah. Uh, I'm having trouble getting you in, in the wet spot there. Oh, wet head. Oh, that's because that was last night. You're a scuba diver. Okay, here we go. Is that it? Uh, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, now I can do that. And we have uh, we have four people here so far. Okay, good. Hello, everybody. How are you? Haven't seen. Hey. Haven't seen. Uh, let's see here. Three of you since the new year. How was your new year, Kathleen? Did you do anything festive? I did. Wait a minute. She's going no, and then she says I did. <laughs> what did you do that was festive on New Year? Just festive things. Like what? 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 Uh, give me a give me a give me an idea of festive. What is, to you is festive? I don't know. What is she? Oh, we were very festive. Marjorie was asleep by ten, and I, uh, I just sat there uh, uh, taking time off from jerking off to porn and watched the ball drop, and then I suddenly <laughs> realized that the ball was mine. So you know, it was. Uh, <laughs> I still got it, huh? Still got it. <laughs> uh, Josh, what did you do on New Year? Uh, honestly, don't really remember. The, well, I, I don't think I did anything. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm sure now that Kathleen didn't do anything because she didn't come up with a good answer. Um, I'm not saying. Huh? I'm not saying. Uh, uh, you're not saying what? Oh, it, did something happen on New Year's? What, what are you? What are you giving us that for? <laughs> Make your mind up, Phil. Where you want that camera to be? Will you? I'm trying. <laughs> Quit make up your mind, okay? Well, I rebooted the computer, so it uh, needed a. An adjustment. Every time I reboot, I have to check everything to make sure it works oh, yeah. again. You know, because something, something or another will always go wrong on it. Um, but uh, so I guess, Josh, you didn't do anything on New Year, right? No, probably same thing I'm doing right now. Sat yeah. in this chair and watch this TV. Yeah, and and and. and I mean, and, I was pretty high, but that's also well, normal. So yeah, that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. Yeah, let me see here. Where is this? Um, yeah. Uh, well, that's uh, <laughs> very, very small. Uh, no, I, 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 you know something? I don't do that much pot anymore. Um, do you do much pot anymore, Chris, uh, Kathleen? No. She, by the way, for you listening on radio, she's nodding her head. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a new. Okay, or listening to the audio. I shouldn't say radio. That's an old-fashioned term. And my I son be using. said, "Yeah, Cracker Jack." <laughs> what? A anyway, so um um, and and Phil, what did you do on New Year? Anything? Uh, no, I was probably asleep by nine. I think I woke up. <laughs> what a bunch of old farts! Midnight. <laughs> I woke up at midnight, right on the nose. Yeah. I went inside. Faye was asleep in the chair, and I said, hey, it's it's 2020, come to bed. <laughs> well, Marjorie said to me, she says, I'm going to bed. And I said, but you're not going to be up for New Year's. She says, it's New Year's somewhere. <laughs> that's right. You know, and I <laughs> said, I said, yeah, that's a nice notion, but right now it's in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> you know, so. Exactly. So, Which will be where you'll be if you wake her up. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> So then I watched. I watched the vol drop, which you know it, that is the most. I saw there were a million and a half people in Times Square, and I'm yeah. going. Yeah, know. exactly. Boring. Yeah. Well, I think I mentioned to you these people are there. They can't go to the bathroom. They're they're they're. It's a mass of humanity. Uh, yeah. If any, you know, if they have a heart attack, they're not even going to get them out of there. 
Yeah. I'd have to air, air, you know, airlift them. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, yeah. it's a pain in the ass. The last place I'd ever want to be. Even San Francisco, they get like 200,000 people down at the and, ferry and, building. And, yeah. And by the I way, would, you, you don't want to go to Times Square on New Year's Eve if you got a prostate problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you know. You'll be peeing your pants. Well, you could wear diapers, but then it was so cold, your diaper would freeze would over. Freeze. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I can't imagine being there. You know, I, I think they do it with CGI. You know, there's, yeah. there's really nobody there. I can imagine that. Your, di your dick turning into a popsicle. I was just thinking of that image. You know, hey, there was a day mine could do that. Could do what? Turn into a popsicle? <laughs> And get licked. Oh, but, I see. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, you know, I'll be joining you soon, so don't worry about that. You know? I, well, uh, I don't know that it's going to affect any of the nerves or anything. No, but it will It will affect. Uh, I'll have to pee more. There may be some urgency to pee. This is from the seeds, not from the, yeah. not from the radiation. If all I got was the radiation, I'd just be mildly uh, fatigued, and that's about it. Okay. Yeah. Maybe a little uh, more going to the bathroom, but the seeds, I'm going to have some of that problem come back again for a while, for a while. But yeah. you know, what the hell? It's all, it's you all, know what's funny? it's all at science. Work, at work now, they're starting to realize I'm not 45. My real age is 55. And some of these guys are actually horrified. Especially wait, 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 let me think about this. They, they don't know that you're, they think you're 45, not 55, but they're horrified. Like, I see. Shit, the fraud is 55, and she's working in the meat department and hey, throwing Kathleen? boxes that are like 70 to 80 pounds like yeah. it's nothing. What, what, did you have to fill out something on a dating site before you could get hired at Costco and you had to lie <laughs> no. about your age? Tell them you're no, 45? No, I never said a word. I mean... You know, yeah. when I applied for the job, when they interviewed me, I mean, the manager flat out told me, man, you're way too overqualified for this position. I said, listen, hire me. I'll be your best wad. Work is directed. So they put me in these different positions. So now I'm seasoned. So they put me in the meat department because when I come in. Good thing to be seasoned when you're in the meat department. Yeah. And yeah. All you got to do is go into the oven. Yeah. And so we're throwing these boxes of like 70 to 80 pounds of beef. And so at first the guys look at me and they go, no. And I go, oh, yeah. And then the, I'm like, and they're like, holy shit. Yeah. And so they talk, They find out that my sister-in-law is the manager. And they talk to her. And my sister-in-law goes, hey, she bodybuilds. So yeah. she can handle the weight. But you know the next thing they're going to say about you? You know, don't you? That you're, that you're a lesbian. Nope, not at all. Really? By oh the way, God, by the way, I'm folks, I'm here to testify. Like this, this, I'm te and twenty five yeah. that are hitting on me. I'm I I'm I'm here to tell you now, this woman is not a lesbian. Okay. No. I know that from personal <laughs> experience. No. Yeah. Um, yeah, my son goes, You don't look lesbian either. Lesbian. No, I've got these kids hitting on me and I'm like, Oh my god, are you no, kidding me? No, but you were you were wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You were a truck driver for UPS. You're, you're, no, I was a manager. Well, you were a manager, but you also drove a truck from time to time, well, right? I drove a truck for like four months. Yeah, and and uh, they always get the idea that eh, it's got to be a lesbian doing that, you know. And then well, look the at her, look at her lifting was, those boxes, I, you know. When I was an on-road supervisor, you know, my lesbian drivers go, you know, you need to come to this club with us. It's in Lafayette, and it's called Just Rewards. But they called it just regrets. Well, I'll tell you. So I go, okay. Just regrets. Yeah, when, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, uh, my father took me to the symphony and the ballet and things like that. And I didn't uh, play any sports. And uh, all the kids at school thought I was a lesbian. So, you know. <laughs> very funny. <laughs> very similar. Very similar. So I'm out with my drivers and we're all dancing and then in comes all the management entourage and we're laughing. I go, right now, these women are going, is she? No. What? No. Is she? I mean, it was the best night ever. They didn't know. Yeah, they, 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 must, uh, they must have a real, uh, they must really be impressed by the fact that you can do what you do physically. Because I totally. can't, look, I, I couldn't do it when I knew you, okay? I mean, yeah. I, I relied on you to carry a television set from one room to the other, you know? 
And she would do it. She would pick it up uh -huh. and just take it somewhere. <laughs> like a uh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I, maybe uh, I made a big mistake by ever leaving you. You were a great asset to my life when it came to moving <laughs> and you. lifting and things like that, you know. The other day I come into work and usually I'll have my sweatshirt and stuff on. So I just had a shirt on and I had my tights and one of the guys goes, oh, my God, you're built like a superhero. And I go, man, I get that all the time. I got to tell you something. Tonight, we uh, what happened was at the hospital when I was being checked out, I have the book mm -hmm. here. I got this whole little thing that told me what to do and what not to do. And it said, don't lift anything heavy for six, for, for uh, four to six weeks. Oh, wow. And then it said, but make sure that uh, when you're taking a shower, you, uh, you try and keep as much water away from the incision. Oh, and I'm going, they gave me the wrong release stuff. This is not what they did to me. There's no incision. Oh, yeah, if I had an incision, I don't have to pick up something for four to six weeks. So tonight, there's a big garbage bag. It's really heavy because Marjorie decided she was going to clean out the refrigerator. And it's really heavy. And she says, could you take this out for me? I said, have you seen the literature? Hey, Alex, they I can't put you lift. Out, didn't they? I can't. What? Well, the super, they, they put you out. So you didn't see the incision on your back. Oh, that I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'll tell mirror. you what I have. What I have, finally. No, it, it runs vertical right down the middle, uh, just just below the back. Finally, and above I'm, the, I'm, finally I'm very 2000s because I hey, got that long. You no. You to fly out there and take your garbage out? I'll do okay. it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, we, I, I did it. And, and I lifted. And she said, oh, don't do that. It says you can't. I said, it also well, says doing, don't doing wash doing. the incisions. I said, that's for somebody else. I don't know who, but it's Maybe not me. Yeah. 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 But anyway, so, um, uh, but I mean, it was, it was, um, uh, yeah, I couldn't figure out what that was all about. It just, that incision is called butt crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you know, but and what I, I'm very two thousands now. I have four tattoos. I mean, if I showed them to you, they're so small you can't, you can barely see them. They, they put one here, here, they're on and on either side of me, and that's for where the radiation is going to like guide be a have a guidepost, and then the four uh, a gold uh, implants that he put in my prostate. You know, gold prostate. You know, uh, uh, they Chicken for gold panning. They they use those to guide the the radiation, and I sit in this room, and this thing's all been pre-programmed, and goes. It's wonderful. The only thing is, I have to take milk of magnesia the night before, and I had hadn't had milk of magnesia since I was a kid. Do you remember what it what, tastes what like? What do you use that for? A laxative. Oh yeah. But it's at it, least it, it was castor oil. Uh, yeah, no. But I mean, I, I suddenly I taste it, and I went. I think the worst thing about milk of magnesia is it has no taste at all, and has yeah, the consistency chalk, of chalk. Yeah. 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 And and that's the worst part of it. That and a fleet enema in the morning, which yeah, I don't mind. Hell, you know, I'll just shove that thing in there, squirt a little water, and you know, because they want want me to cleanse myself, and then I then I go in and they say. Uh, go urinate. I said, well, I don't have to. They said, go urinate. I went urinate. <laughs> and uh, well, they said, if you have to, if you fad? have to poop, if you have to poop, go poop. And I went, no, nah, I don't have to poop. Well, wasn't if you can't poop, well, let me finish the story, oh. will you? Oh, okay. And so I, so I, I pee, and I come out, and I go, why did you want me to pee? And they say, drink these four glasses of water. <laughs> Because they needed to fill my bladder up with water, but since they didn't know how much was already in there, they wanted me to void so they could, I guess, refill or something. Well, they can Evil. They can figure out how much was in there. They just go over it with, uh, what's that uh, thing? Uh, it's the, a waste the, of a CAT scan. Well, not oh, a CAT scan. Oh, you mean sauna, uh, sonogram. Sonogram. Yeah. 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 Now, but, you know why they wanted you to pee? Because if you couldn't pee, they were going to give you a catheter. And so, you know, you're smiling. If you didn't pee, they would have catheterized you and you wouldn't have been a happy guy. You know something? Um, I don't know, it's not a bad idea when I can kind of sling a hose over my shoulder and pee anytime I want to, you know? <laughs> Ask Patrick. He loves it.
<laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, 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 hopefully I will not need a catheter at any point. So, no, As long as you were able to pee, then they won't give you well, the catheter. Well, yeah, they told me before I left, you got to pee. But the thing is, they make you pee. I said this last night. They make you pee in this, in this uh, uh, jar. Uh, what is it? They want to measure bottle, it. A bottle. Okay. Yeah. And they said, I, well, I'm 100 cc's of, of pee. And it's not, that's not that much. It's that much. But, you know, I, every time I ever went to the doctor, he gave me a cup. To pee and I couldn't do it. You know, I can't do it on command. Picture? She's trying to pee now, my mother. I got the faucet going. <laughs> Dude, I, I kid you not. I well, listen. Would you do me a favor? Save some Seriously? of that. Pee, save some of that pee for me. So the next Mark, time, you know, so the next time I be, I have she to leave she went. because How can you not know when they, they do the seeds, I'm going to have to do this whole get around whole, this whole pee routine. I'm on the radio. Uh, no, you're not on the radio. You're on. Uh, you're on the internet, I which tell is her whatever she wants to believe. So you don't know what's going on. Anyway, the, po on. the point I'm making is, if you save her pee for me, oh well, he's not gonna hear it. If you save yeah. pee for me. I'll keep it, and then I'll just, while they're not looking, pour it into the bottle. You know, you know. Yeah. Well, good news. You're pregnant. Anyway, <laughs> I don't think his mother's gonna get pregnant. No, I don't think so. Either. Boy, babe. All right. Okay. You're, you're going through. You, do you have hot flashes, Alex? Anyway. So, uh, but no, they will do that again when I, uh, the next operation I'm going to have are the seeds. That's the next time they put me out. But um, uh, it, it just, I just, it took me forever to get out of that hospital. And I'm, I'm going, when I got a colonoscopy, I, I, I just walked off the table, walked into another room, put my clothes on and left, you know. And they just made when I, was, huh? when I was 18, I, mm -hmm. I was going to school in Miami. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you'd go over by the pool and you'd see all of these people talking about their operations and that their scar is. You this now you big. know what it's about, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> and now you know what it was about. And I used to laugh. <laughs> and now I'm there. But. So far, Kathleen's been pretty good. You haven't you only had one operation, the whole breast thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was it. And when I was three months pregnant, I had to have my appendix removed. Oh, God. Why? I had what? an emergency appendectomy, and they took my appendix out of my belly button orthoscopically. Really? So good. Yeah, and the, you know, the surgeon came in the next day. I was in and out in 24 hours. Yeah. And he goes, did you have some juice? I said, I ate my whole breakfast. He's like, oh, you can go home. But he said... Funny thing was, your bowels were curled around your appendix. And I said, seriously, that was the man upstairs. And he said the whole surgery team agreed. Because if my appendix had burst, I would have lost my son. Wow. That is Did you hear that, uh, um, a son? Is he in yeah, the room? Yeah, he said, he just said, holy shit. Yeah, yeah. You were almost killed by your mother's appendix. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. And you know what? I had such a high tolerance from pa for pain. You know, I'd come back from Mexico and I thought because I'm so skinny, I was having growing pains. And so I go to see my OB and when he pushed, it didn't hurt. When he let go, it did. And he goes, you need to walk across the street. And I go, are you serious? And he goes, yeah, it's your appendix. And the sad thing was the emergency crew knew me by name. Wow. Well, I've because gained I had all I, I, kinds of broken bones and stuff in the past. Yeah, I but, got you know, yeah. he, my son came out with flying colors, so thank you, Jesus. Yeah, uh, wh whoever he is. Uh, I, uh, yeah. I, I'm, 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 I'm up to 199 pounds, so I'm, I'm going back on a diet again. Oh, here's the thing I've got to go on a diet anyway because they told me you can't eat this and you can't eat that and you can't eat oh. gas producing foods. And I said, What can I eat? and they gave me a list. And I said, he said, do you think you can feel happy with that? And I said, that's what I've been eating all along. It's a low carb diet. I, yeah. Everything was on the low carb diet. I could, I can still eat, you know. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm a happy camper. So. You yeah. know, I'm eighty percent plant based diet. Really? Yeah. Yes. I'm. You know, uh, how much? How much? How much? How much? What percentage? Eighty uh percent. -huh. Well, I'm eighty percent plant based. So, you know, we have something in common. Are you a vegetable already? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> At such a young age. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> you haven't seen me. I sleep late, and, uh, you know, I get up for my, I'm, I, I, the, you know, I said the other day, I think I said last night, th this is the most exciting thing that's happened to me in years. 
you know? Uh, I know that sounds hey, silly. I thought it was a barrel of monkeys, you know. <laughs> you thought it was a barrel of monkeys? Yeah, that's what it's uh, one yeah. of those uh, toys. By the way, I don't know about you. I, I don't know about you yeah. with your yeah. pro with your prostate stuff. But the, I went to the uh, the um, um, prostate um, um, radiation radi school. radiation um, oncology section of Mount Sinai, which is in another building, and it's fucking gorgeous. Not everybody can get in there. No, wait a minute. I got to tell you <laughs> that uh, the, their waiting room it's these plush chairs. And it's like That's I'm because sitting. your ass hurts after well, they do no, those. No, uh, no, I'm, uh, uh, no, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, why is it so nice? And I'm thinking they feel sorry for us because we're going to die. Yeah, they make a lot of money. Yeah, and they make a lot of money <laughs> off of this. Yeah, this this thing, this the radiation part of this this part will cost about twenty nine thousand dollars. That's not bad. That's a deal. Well, it's all taken care of by Medicare and my insurance, but, you know. And then they'll, of course, send me a thing that says, uh, and you may owe your, uh, your uh, uh, doc, uh, you may owe uh, $3.75, you know. So they always do but that. But the rest, oh, we got this, you yeah. know, to make you feel bad. Well, I think oh, when, Marjorie, when Marjorie had her knee thing, we had this insurance, and she said she never was asked to pay a penny. Then on some of the really major stuff, the surgical stuff, it's just all taken care of, you know. So uh, good for insurance. But anyway, enough enough of my cancer because uh, although I will use it as an excuse from time to time when Phil starts talking about Trump that, oh, please, my cancer's acting up again. <laughs> you know, just don't talk about that. Trump I, will it, solve that. Yeah, sure. He'll take, yeah. He wants yeah. to get rid of health care. Oh, you, you're believing those me memes that you hear on the internet? No, I'm believing the guy who gives speeches, you know, and what he's, he's not getting rid of health care. He's improving it. Oh, I see. How's he improving it? Uh, he's improving it by making it more competitive, by making it more transparent, more competitive. by allowing you to shop uh, uh, different uh, hospitals oh, when did uh, I, because when did I, he when wants I, them to post their rates. I, when did uh, I hear that before? And, that, and it, their success and failure rates. This will make things more competitive, and then things got worse. I've heard that over and over again throughout my entire life. Oh, if we do oh, this, I'll yeah, get more I competitive. Know. You know. Uh, oh, you were the guy yelling, the sky is falling, right? No. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's that's what it is. Uh, I finally decided Trump is the best president we've ever had. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Uh, now shut the fuck up. My okay. son is laughing. You're what? My son is laughing. Oh, I thought. You said... and, and he's also the best president we're going to have in 2020. Oh, okay. I just found out something my watch can do. You know, I have Mickey and Minnie, but yeah. that any of Trump? The, any of these things, I if I if I if tap it with two fingers. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on, Hold on a second. Two fingers, they say. Whoops, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Come on. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Please tell me they don't start humping. Oh, well. That, well, sometimes it, you can use the whole fist. It doesn't work. <laughs> sometimes you can use the whole fist. <laughs> it's 10. Welcome back, Tony. Mickey, she again. Mickey talks. <laughs> it's ten. At yeah. night she gets a little Wait a minute, Tony. We're trying to hear the Mickey. Ma, don't worry about it. Who are we talking oh, about? Oh boy, this is no, really no. you know. At the, uh, having Tony on this show, this is your typical New York experience. This is. She's driving me crazy today. <laughs> I think we. Could I do... should charge her a tumble to go into the bathroom. I'd be rich. <laughs> <laughs> She's nosy. Yeah. What are you talking about? She doesn't even know what's going on. All she wants is Trump to die in office. That's the morning. Well, on top yeah, of me that, too, after his third term. On top of that, I got a crown that's falling apart in my mouth, so I have to see my dentist on Tuesday. So I got. My but you get replenish, Alex. Remember, you held off. Hmm. You held off. Remember, it goes back to. No, I got to get. Uh, got to get a, a, a implant. Implant here, but the oh, crown, hmm. a crown over here, I may need because it's kind of getting a little on the loosey goosey side. It's been falling apart for years. And now I think it's it's seen its best days. So I've got the dentist to go to on Tuesday, yeah. and then I oh have my. this to go to then, and then that to go to then, and it's you know, and then my ra my, my, my radiation starts on the twenty seventh. You know. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah. Man, I'm jealous. All I have to do is go to work in the gym. Well, if you want to come take the radiation for me, I'll let you do it. Okay. 
Um, I'm getting ready to go back in the gym. Uh, the other Sunday, I, I went uh, for uh, a couple of hours and, uh, you know, just walked around, got uh, found my locker again. And, uh, you know, I hadn't been in. That well, that gym. was I'd certainly a, 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 a profitable <laughs> day at the uh, at the uh, at the gym. How, by the way, how long have you had that gym? Uh, he told for quite, a, quite a while. But you uh -huh. see, and how much do you pay? How much do you pay for it? Uh, I think it's about sixty bucks a month. Yeah, you're no, the kind. Seventy-five. You're the kind of guy they really love. Because yeah, yeah, I got a, lock, I got a locker and they do the laundry. <laughs> Never yeah. complain. But right. you, you know, I hadn't gone since my operation, uh, since the heart operation, mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I really, I just wasn't ready to go back. And uh, so I had left my gym clothes in the locker, and I thought that maybe they take them out every day and clean them. But you have, to, I forgot, you have to drop them off at the laundry. Yeah, so what area. did they smell oh, yeah, like when you opened up your locker? Oh, they're, they're clean. Everything that's in there is clean. Oh, okay. you, it's in a little mesh bag. You put the stuff in there. You give it to the people at the shoe shine laundry area, and then uh, the they shoe put it shine back in the laundry area. What would it be? Yeah, if, you, if you leave your shoes with them, they'll shine them. Uh, oh wow! Hello, hello, hello. By the way, to Patrick, who has just joined Hi, us, Darth Pat. Hey. Um, uh, by the way, Pat, Patrick. Uh, since you're a Star Wars fan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the latest Star Wars movie? No, I, uh, I have no desire to. Avoid I, it. Avoid it at all costs. It's terrible. Well, I'll, I'll end up seeing it. One of my buddies will buy the, the uh, Blu-ray and bring it over, and that's fine. Then we can fast forward through. Yeah. Shit, yeah. You know? It is. It is god awful. It is just. Yep. It's pathetic. Uh, it's product. Is what it is. It's not inspiration, you know, and uh, that's what we seem to like. Alex, I'm very happy. We j I just got a thing from Jeff Stein, but well, Jeff, why don't you just call? Why am I getting messages from you? Um, you know, I don't know where that came from. Hmm. I don't know where it came from. Uh, left field. Huh? Left field. Left field. Yeah, exactly. So, mm -hmm. you know. Anyway, so. Um, um, yes, Patrick. Well, yes, Patrick. Go ahead. Uh, two, two things. Tony, yeah. mm -hmm. you, you shouldn't have had your hair cut. Can we see more of the background? <laughs> That's a decent cut. I like actually, his hair cut. Actually just put it back. Yeah, but, 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 but it, it, the, the wallpaper, wallpaper is, is horrid. The wallpaper she, is... And she thought this is good yeah, taste. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. It's not only horrid. It's scary. <laughs> you know? I mean... Remember, does she, she go works. into the kitchen often? Yeah, she does. But you know what uh, she loves? When he said the wallpaper, over. I never noticed it until you said, is that a wallpaper? It is. Did you? Handling the other room. Did it's you, not, we're waiting for the boat to come in. Did but, you uh, uh, Did you um, have a, uh, 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 a, uh, uh, hold on a second. Jason is called here. Let me give Jason a spot. I'll put him in the number seven spot. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Jason's uh, whole number thing. Well, let me. St what what is your? Is it three a.m.? Huh? Three a.m. Three a.m. What what does that mean? There's a uh, me, my wife, and my son oh. uh -huh. all have a.m. as initials. Oh, I see. Okay, wait a minute. I just I yeah, just did I like this. And I didn't know Josh. Uh, Jason oh. started with a uh, with an A. Oh, oh. middle name, last name. Hey, is that oh. Okay, 3 a.m. Now, come on. There we go. All right, now I can. Uh, there we go. Okay, we just need to fill that one spot if anybody wants to call. Uh, anyway, um, uh, how are you doing, Patrick's Jason? Patrick's Have I, I, I don't think I've talked. I, I don't think I've talked to you since the new year, right, Jason? No. No. So how was your new year? Did you? What did you do on New Year's Eve? Somebody, somebody's got to have done something. I stayed I up till midnight. I'm not saying anything. You're, you're not saying anything. What did you do? I'm, I have a feeling she did something terribly sinful on, on New Year's Eve that she doesn't even want to talk about. She killed somebody. somebody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know. Um, you didn't do anything, Jason? No, I barely stayed up till midnight. You know what I mean? I think most people are getting that way. I think they're just going, this is ridiculous, you know? Yeah, New Year's should also actually be December 21st, too, so. Why? 
That's uh, winter uh, solstice. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, that, that's why Christmas is on the twenty fifth. I think you so know that, what? What is New Year's without Guy Lombardo? Well, you so, know, uh, uh, Gooey Lombago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what happened was is that they said that if we took every month and I think made it thirty days, we would come out with one extra day, and that one extra day should be kind of a non-day that we call New Year. Okay? And then every month would be the same length. I think it works. Uh, I try to figure out how uh, Larry Brown does the dates. And uh, I, I came up with the idea that the date uh, and the day always repeats every 28 years. So if you can yes. uh, have some sort of... Um, uh, date that you know he's already what he's already was. said he has already said that's how he does it oh you know but to even memorize 28 years worth of dates is or to have a method is pretty difficult i know well it's i think it's, he does it with baseball uh my friend we uh my friend barry and i try to figure it out and we use the birthday mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's how he came up with it but it took it took like 10 minutes to to come up with the date and uh, whereas he does it almost instantly. Really? Oh, yeah. your friend Larry. You know? Yeah, my friend yeah. Larry. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so um, uh, so uh, so we still can't get out of Kathleen what she did on New Year's. And it sounds like maybe did you do something sinful? Did you sin? Did you sin against our Lord at all? Uh, <laughs> did you know. throw some meat? Did you have a good time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the that important thing. Not saying. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I'm not saying. Um, anyway, <laughs> what did you do, Patrick? Uh, New Year's. What did you do? Yeah. Uh, I watched. Um, what movie did I watch? Uh, it was that good. No, it, it was. It, I, I have. A certain rotation of movies I watched during the holidays, and I can't remember which one it was. And I had and you drank Mountain Dew, and I had my Mountain Dew. And yes. you know, yeah. I mean, I I don't give a shit about New Year's. So exactly, what liquor was Mountain Dew uh, used as a as a uh, not a chaser but a mixer a catalyst? Yeah, there was a certain there's a liquor, and the, and they developed Mountain Dew for that particular mm -hmm. liquor. I don't think so. No, they, they developed Mountain Dew because computer uh, programmers needed something to keep them up all night. <laughs> no, 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 it goes back. Uh, you, right, Patrick? Is is that am I correct? Yeah, it it was it was developed as a mixer, um, but for it, a particular, and it was originally clear. And I don't remember what the mixer, what it would for. It was moonshine. Well, I'll say vodka. <laughs> one, but I don't know that it would have been moonshine. I think it may have been whiskey, you know, yeah. a little bit more. It would probably go good with, like, Bacardi Limon because it's got that lime taste okay. the Bacardi. I don't know about the okay. red. Okay, Mountain Dew. Yeah. Stylized as Mountain Dew, M T N D E W, right. is a carbonated soft drink brand produced by PepsiCo. The yeah. original formula was invented in 1940 by Tennessee beverage bottlers Barney and Allie Hartman. A revised formula was created by Bill Bridgeforth in 1958. The rights of the formula. <laughs> Between the 1940s and 1980s, there was one variety of Mountain Dew, which was citrus-flavored and caffeinated in most markets. It doesn't say anything here about it ever being, ever being used as, a, uh, uh, as any kind yeah. of a mixer. Well, yes. You might find it somewhere else, but uh, it, yeah, that's what I read. It was a while ago. Looks like Jason is. Uh, yeah, Jason. Yes, yes Jason. So, hand in it. Any of you guys watched a documentary on, I think it was as a Dublin uh, Dr. Pepper? Dublin Dr. Pepper? Yeah. It was uh, Dublin's like, that's Ireland, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a city in, in uh, Texas, though. It was, uh, they had a yeah, regional a Dublin, area Texas. for mm. bottling the Dr. Pepper. And when Dr. Pepper decided to go to high fructose corn syrup, they decided to stay sugar. So they named themselves Dublin Dr. Pepper. Then they're like, 
apparently they were around forever and Dr. Pepper like even spouted how great they were. But then a couple of years later, they sued them and put them out of business. <laughs> but uh, it was a great documentary. I loved it. You, you, you know, it's funny. It, it, Doctor, it makes me want to boycott Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Dr. Pepper, uh, if any of you live Which, in, I got it. I found it. If any, any, of, you live in, it, any of you live in the South, uh, uh, Dr. Pepper is probably more popular than Coca-Cola. Uh, I mean, check Wikipedia. I did. It says, yeah, okay, well, it says here the Hartmans had difficulty in Knoxville obtaining uh, their preferred soda to mix with liquor, preferably whiskey, so they developed their own, which was Mountain Dew. I'm looking at the same thing. Okay. okay. I, want it, I want it mix Mountain Dew with whiskey. I would do Mountain Dew with yeah. more of a non, you know, like a So vodka. it says the, the soda that was created to be a whiskey chaser. Really? You know, Mountain <laughs> Dew. Really? No. Okay. Yeah. You know, the first time Alex and I went out, we must have drank between the two of us ten diet cokes <laughs> at Fran Frantoyos, and then um, Tony Tantillo called you, mm -hmm. and you talked to him for a while, and then you passed the phone to me, and then I talked to him, and then the rest is history. The rest is history. Yeah, but I mean, um, um, uh. We did drink a lot of Diet Coke together, but I, totally. when you when you said we went out to dinner and we drank about twenty bottles of, I'm going, is she going to say booze? I never no, did booze, and no. she never did booze. And then you said Coca Cola, and I went, okay, yeah. I was expecting to say you guys did twenty lines of Coke together no, or something. I mean, well, we did those time. too. Yeah, you guys are no. boring. Damn. One time I was at the apartment, and you had gone out with. Um, <laughs> Bob Rubin, and you called me up, and you're like, Kathleen, I'm wasted. I had half a margarita. Oh, yeah, 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 that's that's me. You know, I'm a, I'm a two-beer drunk. I'm oh, one beer drunk. Uh, when we went to Europe, I drank all the wine, and you drove. Do you know the only thing I smoke pot for now? Um, I take this pill at night. Uh, it, it's kind of a, a uh, it's a generic lyrical, uh, and uh, it puts me to sleep very nicely. But it usually wakes me up. I usually wake up about six o'clock sometimes and can't go back to sleep. So I go take a couple of tokes off this uh, this uh, vape uh, of of pot, and then it puts go right back to bed. Puts me right back to sleep. The only thing I use it for is is a sleeping pill. If our president have his has his way, you won't be able to vape that shit anymore. Yeah, you should, you should go back to real stuff. Yeah. Go back to real stuff. He's gonna save you. Well, no, I did, I like to use the real stuff, but in the middle of the night, I'd rather not light a joint. I just rather you, have a, you know. Why don't yeah. you smoke a bowl? Have a bowl and just pack your bowl. Have it already all set to go and. Takes two seconds to fill it. Yeah, I'm grinder, grinder, grinder are, shit people, up. are people allowed to smoke in a multi-unit <laughs> building like that? <laughs> yeah, sure. Probably, no. You no. know, Walnut Creek, you can't. You're not allowed no, to smoke. No, but it's in pot. It's pot. You're not. It's not like you're sitting around smoking all day and making it's not the like room you're smell like yeah. 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 You're taking like a puff or I know two some puffs pot and heads smoke the shit all day. Huh? What? I know yeah. a pothead that smokes that shit all day. You know, just like it, just as if it was a cigarette. Really? Yeah. He yeah. must not be smoking very good stuff. <laughs> no, he smokes good yeah. stuff, but he's been, you know, 50, 60 years, he's been, uh, uh, this has been his thing, or 50, 55, maybe. Does he have a, does he hold down a good job? He's, uh, used to own an art gallery. Now he's retired and owns real estate. So, so that's uh, a no. <laughs> well, he makes, he makes more than I do. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Anyway, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's um, that's uh, what's with me and pot. You know, Marjorie loves her pot. She loves, she comes home. I remember when I was a kid, my parents came home from work at night, and they would all have a uh, they would have a drink. That was their tradition, right? They, 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 yeah, they did it to unwind. I can't remember what their drink of choice was now, that, uh, but uh, that, that's what they would do. And now Marjorie comes home, and she has her, you know, she has a, a, a couple of puffs off a joint, and that relaxes her and lets her wind down. And I think every generation has needed something. When they got yeah. home from work, they needed something to help them wind down. And what a better way than pot. Pot is so harmless, you know. 
Uh, hey, remember when we went to the Castro Theater and they had the whole um, Alfred Hitchcock series? And so we'd go every night, we'd watch the movies, and when someone had issues, it was like, you know, someone was having an issue, and they're like, oh, my God, do you need a drink? Yeah. Uh. And then by the by the fifth shot, we the whole audience was giggling. Yeah, 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 yeah it because was. Because back then, the whole thing was, if you had a problem, hey, looks like you need a drink. Yeah, you need a good, st- they- you need a good stiff drink. You've just been totally. through a terrible thing. I thought Here, everybody a- in the Castro was using the amyl nitrate. You no, know, oh, hey, no. you need a shot, uh, boom. <laughs> no, it was a drink. Yeah, yeah, it was drink. And yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, also, I mean, uh, what I always always like when I'm watching old movies now is to see the pre- oh. predominance of smoking yes. in movies. Yeah. You oh, know, yeah. a guy is a doctor and he's smoking while he's talking to the Please. people, you know. Uh, what it's we, crazy that they age, raised the age to 21 for cigarettes. Yes, it's it's crazy that they don't really work really hard to get people not to do cigarettes because they're totally useless, well, you know. I you know what they've been doing. I think that they are doing that, and it's working slowly over time because the amount of people who smoke now is like a quarter of what used to be even in the '80s. That's why they've gotten into this vaping thing because they're th- saying that they'll get addicted to nicotine, which is addicting, and, and then they'll start smoking yeah, but, regular but here, cigarettes. But, but here, no, 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 they'll never go back to regular cigarettes. Vaping no, is they, too some of them easy. Do because it's kids. Yeah, as kids, they, they like they the mango the flavor. And yeah, but here, like here's the thing. Here's, here's, here's my argument. You yeah. set the, the limit at, and I always said this, you set for smoking cigarettes now in most states, 21. Uh, well, does that, does that mean that the day before you're 21... It's bad for you, and that when you're suddenly 21, it's not bad for you anymore? No, they're, they're just saying you can make your own decisions I, at 21. Well, I think you should be able to make your decision anytime, and I think that there's enough uh, peer pressure right now in this country about not smoking. And it's so difficult to, to actually have a smoking habit and then go to a movie theater where you can't smoke or a bar now, where you can't smoke. Can or, you imagine? Let me finish. Let me finish what I'm saying. Oh, that sure. the peer pressure alone has bro- has, has, has da- tamped down the uses, usage of tobacco in this country. Go ahead. It's not can because you, it costs so much, you know. Can you imagine Bloomberg becoming president and him saying, you can't smoke cigarettes until you're 50 or you can't have them at all? You know, just like he tried to do with uh, large size drinks and. Uh, well, you're awesome. assuming he, you're assuming he's going to do that, Phil, because you don't like him. But the fact is, he probably wouldn't do that. He's got a track record. You know, remember? No, he, what he tried to look. Do I'm, I, when he sugar. wanted when he wanted to do away with sugary drinks, I thought that yeah, a lot of people felt it was silly, but it was not a bad thing to consider because really sugar is very bad for you. It's one of the things we don't it's talk terrible. about. It's it's terrible, terrible for you. Look what it did to you. Yeah, it, you it's know. a scourge, you know, yeah. with diabetes and, and everything. It's it's sugar, and it's addictive. You think cigarettes are addictive? I was walking the dog this afternoon, and I went past the frozen yogurt place, and I had to say to the dog, please take me away from the, the entrance to that place so I don't eat it. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I actually had to... Uh, force myself not to go in there. Exactly. So I don't know that he was off base about it. I just think that education is more important and 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 social chastisement is more important in getting people to quit something than yeah. to make a law against it or to even put an age limit on it. Well, uh, I don't think there should be any laws against anything that you should do what you want because you have you know, it's your right to do it. Well, they they just said they just, they, I they just shouldn't have to pay. Shit and drive I my car have, down the street, shouldn't I? Yeah, I shouldn't have to pay for your addiction. You know. Well, should I be able to get a shit face drinking and drive my car down the street? You you said that you do that all the time. Oh no, that's the company no. car. No, I think we should have to. Pay, I think we should have to pay for your addiction. You know. Because we as a nation allowed this stuff to go on. I mean, if, if, if we, if you're, oh, if you're saying that, that we you know that I don't have to pay for your addiction, then how come you're allowing your government to make the selling of tobacco okay in this country? Well, 
because uh, you have uh-huh. a you have a right to, to uh, not do it. Uh, or well, right to do uh, it. Nah, you know, I mean, I just I, I you know, I Hi, think Kate. what do, what's going on at your house? Uh, what is this? It's my Nerf gun. Uh, <laughs> that's the end of that. Sorry, computer. sorry, Tony. Yeah, I said yeah. Sorry. You. That's the end of that <laughs> webcam. Uh, anyway, uh, I can uh, pills in your head. Huh? I can put a pee in, tie little PMs in there. Open your mouth. <laughs> Believe me, she's always been this childish. Okay. I used to have a nerve group. I was a nerve group. You know. Anyway, uh, but all I'm saying is that, that, that I, I think in the area of tobacco, there's been enough peer pressure that has made people kind of quit, you know. Uh, I think that the the um, vaping They're treated like pariahs. The problem with vaping was it came along and people suddenly didn't look upon it like lighting up a cigarette. Catholic. Okay. Uh, oh, here we go now. Okay, go, uh, both uh, of you go at it. Go at it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> there we go. You know, now you have to shoot oh, up Bill's gonna go get a real because one. of where you are on the screen. <laughs> you're gonna have to. Sh- oh, he's gonna go get his revolver. That's what he's gonna get. You have to yeah. shoot up to get her, straight up, uh, uh, Jason, uh, because she's she's up above you. And by the way, Phil's yeah, yeah. gone, so he's not there right now. So shoot at her. There you go. And then you shoot down, Kathleen. Shoot down. Shoot down. You know. You gotta shoot down, Kathleen. See, see, you gotta do that. And then he can do that, and he's going to get you. He's going to get you good. Okay. And, and what do you have, Phil? Of See, course. I, I took the bullets out. <laughs> <laughs> but my revo- this revolver yeah. has a laser. Watch. I like oh, that. Oh, wow. It does. Really? Oh, and it so also, camera. by the way, might I add, it also lights It also lights cigarettes as well. So it, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know. See, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's a lighter. It's a lighter. He's dying to take somebody out. I, tonight, tonight, tonight I was watching a documentary it's, it's on small. the history of film, uh, and it's a very interesting. If you get to see it, it's on Hulu. It's terrific. It's a whole series, and it's amazing. And one of the things the guy showed, and I have to go back and see if I heard correctly, but he showed a camera from World War II that was used in wartime that ha- was a camera, and it shot film, but it also shot bullets. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Really? I'm losing control of this show. Look at her. She's just <laughs> goofy. What? A, Are you sure she's 55 and not five? She's one. <laughs> listen, I got to tell you, she's one goofy broad. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Jeez almighty. Uh, what? <laughs> You're an asshole. You're calling your son an asshole. I've never heard a mother call their son an asshole. This is modern times. Yeah. My mother just called me a little freak. Your mother just called you a little freak? Freak. Oh, I used to be a ball breaker. Oh, I see. Oh, man. Okay, and, 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 and Charlie, you've been very quiet about all of this. What do you think of this nonsense? I don't like any kind of guns. Oh, yeah, exactly. 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 Well, yeah, next, I, I just got that laser. Uh, it's a grip with a built-in laser. Why well, I was about ready to that say that's kind of the gun. That's, that's the kind of gun. Fifty feet. That, that's the kind of gun well, Humphrey Bogart would have used. The idea is is that it's hard to sight because uh, you have such a short barrel. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So uh, this way because you can. It's, that's a close. Yeah, that's like that's the kind of gun that should be. Like used. Well, that's <laughs> that's a Humphrey Bogart gun. It's like uh, all right. <laughs> I'm going to shoot you with my gat. Yeah, it's my you know. backup. Huh? It's my it backup gun. Yeah. Let me, just um, in case. Ray Renati says, save the wet spot for me? What does that mean? You don't even figure it out? No. You know the wet spot? You come, and then you roll over on the bed, and there's a wet spot on the bed. I learned to live with it. Yeah, well, Ray said save it for him. Well, I said you were putting me in the wet spot. Oh, I see. Doesn't Kathleen's son have any friends? <laughs> Friday night playing at home with mom. We should be a little worried. That's what Forbin Colossus says. He may turn into me. 
That's not a bad thing. Uh, so anyway, uh, 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 Patrick, I'm calling upon you, Patrick. Um, <laughs> what do you think of everything that's going on with our republic lately? I think it's great. Really? Fuck that cocksucker in Iran. They should have smushed his ass. You know? um, and I'm tired of hearing people apologize for the United States that we were aggressors or some bullshit that the fucking fly baby cocksucker <laughs> at World War III is going to you know something? How, how about that? You, you know something? Ukraine? Donald Donald Trump couldn't have put it better, to, uh, uh, Patrick. <laughs> there was no reason for. Wait a minute. No. You know, you know why they shot down that Ukrainian airliner? Uh, so that, uh, you know, the Canadians. There were sixty some odd Canadians that died on that. And they're Half of them they're were just from apologizing. Across the river from me. Wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, hold on a second, Kathleen. If you guys don't stop that right now, I'm going to have to come over and take those away from you. Okay? <laughs> you need, you need to time out. Sean goes, when Charlie said, I don't like guns, and Sean goes, consider them Muppet guns. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, anyway. Um, but Patrick, you don't feel that there's a... a a way and proper way to do stuff that you don't take out the high. Yeah, the, you, the... you use a drone. <laughs> well, to begin with, number one, you killed somebody. All right, that's for killed starters. Him good. That's for starters. And the the guy deserved to die. I, I I can't argue with that because you know what they're saying, but still, there's some. You you don't. Well, why don't did he? Why did wait a minute? Why spots, why why did he deserve? Yeah, why? Oh, oh pa Patrick. Uh, yes, Patrick. Patrick. He was a general. Hmm? He was not an elected official. The difference. It's not an assassination when it's military. It was no different than if they would have taken out General Schwarzkopf when he was in Iraq during the first Gulf War. Hmm. Out on the field. It's so different if they would have taken out Patton. It was, I mean, you know, it, it's fucking military. It's different. Mm -hmm. if they had taken it's also different in a war. This was a war. They were they not at war. No, no, we're, we're not at war. war with the we're not at well, war. We will be. Yes, Patrick. If, has his way. if it was the Ayatollah or the president of Iran, that's a different thing. That's a state assassination. The Ayatollah is not elected. Yeah, no, I mean, they, 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 yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it yes, was, Patrick, wasn't? continue, Patrick. It, it is not an elected office. It's a general putting himself out there in the public. He was seen with the protest by the embassy. He'd been known to be directing terrorist activities. So fuck him. And you know what? They should have done it a while ago. Better late than never. It was the same as Bin Laden. You know, unfortunately, George Bush couldn't find the fucker, but Obama did great. All I lost or whatever the fuck that cock fucking American was, did that, did. And this other asshole that Trump killed a few weeks ago, it's another one. Fuck. Well, well, well I, you know, I could, I could argue about, uh, about Obama. Uh, getting uh, Osama bin Laden uh, only in this respect. By the time they finally caught up with Osama bin Laden, uh, he was just sitting in his house watching porn and really wasn't directing anything. So I, I'm kind of curious on, you know, Josh has, you know, his historical stuff. Do you think that was an assassination, something that we shouldn't have done? Or have you already spoken on this? I don't know. I wasn't listening earlier for the general. Josh, did you hear that question? I, mean, I have no problem. You... Wait a minute. Uh, 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 Kathleen, you if you're going to keep giggling yeah. over there, mute yourself, okay? Did she hear me? Oh, she just killed her son with a nerf. Uh, <laughs> are, okay, are you... Dad. It's, yes. Is that what you used to call him? Put those down. <laughs> Daddy. I think it was Grandpa. 
<laughs> Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was sir. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, uh, where were we? Who was saying something? Josh. Josh, yeah. Josh, what's your oh, take yeah, on I mean, this? I, I didn't have a problem with the overall situation. I mean, I, I don't know if it was the right decision, given inflammation of the entire the entire ordeal but i mean if we have a person political figure military figure private citizen doesn't make any difference to me if they're an enemy of the state they're an enemy of the state i mean well, i don't what about the I mean, assassination part of it because he was so high yeah. up is that considered an assassination or i never looked at how patrick was saying i don't care he's, if a, it he's is. a military <laughs> person is that an assassination in, in a war if it is it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me i mean I, I don't care either way i mean wait a minute is iraq, is iraq so a war can, zone phil yeah no it's not yeah. no it's not yeah, well, we're we're not ISIS. well no there's uh, isis isn't there now phil isis hardly yeah, exists any trump. longer no not because fact, of trump i think soleimani did was get help get rid of isis yeah <laughs> right he did more to get. He did more to get rid of ISIS. He did more to get rid of ISIS than Trump ever did. Yeah. Yeah. My, Thanks, my point yeah. is that yeah. no, nobody is saying Patrick's that he was got angel. your ISIS Nobody's right there. The only thing is, Patrick, you're doing that with your mouth closed, and I, I find that a. <laughs> in my mouth. But apparently, Soleimani did, so good for him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 The, uh, I do want to say something to Phil, though. Consequences. Trump didn't even think of the consequences. What consequences? Again, mother. Yeah. What consequences? Well, we it's going to be a, a hundred times worse than the Iraq war, and we're still fucking there after 17 years. Some of know? the consequences were the people on the Ukrainian airplane. That's what the consequences were. Yeah, but they were. took off from Tehran. They didn't take off from Ukraine. They were leaving Tehran. And uh, okay. Tehran the airport. The government said that they were allowed to go, and then they shot them down because they were afraid because they just shot back at us for retaliating against oh. killing this other guy. Well, then they shouldn't have shot it. I want to ask Phil something, though. I remember Phil, uh, I think it was maybe last week, <clears throat> when he said, well, oh, good crouch. good they got Soleimani, and the people in Iran are probably happy for it because they hated him, too. Did you see yeah. all the people in the streets of... Uh, yeah. Uh, Whenever, you know, when I think a million happen, and a half people were there. Yeah, when those things happen, the government says, you go out and you cry in the streets and you hit yourself in the head. Yeah. With, and, do you think and, if that so do you think if that happened to Trump, there'd be as many people in the streets? Nope. No. It'd be no. like that as inauguration. No. Well, no, <laughs> if it did happen to Trump. If it did happen to Trump. And I'm I'm saying that's only wishful no, no. Th that's I, only what excuse me, okay. Phil, it's only wishful thinking on my part. Right. But if it happened to Trump do you think there would be a million and a half people out on the streets chanting and no. protesting? No. no, I don't think it would happen in this country unless it was a. No, like a I'm Donald not Kennedy saying, Phil. Phil, you're saying. It's I, I, I'm, I'm agreeing I, with you I, that I'm, it wouldn't have happened yeah. with Trump. Maybe a John Kennedy or someone like that uh, could uh, have had those kind of crowds uh, in the street crying. Obama and, and could and have. Obama could nah. have. Obama was very, <laughs> very low. Kennedy Obama. did have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Patrick. Yeah. Patrick has his hand up. Patrick is always good about this. He always puts his hand up. You never see. Let him be a lesson to the rest of you. Yes, it only Patrick. Goes one direction. It doesn't go down. It, yes, Patrick. <laughs> well, it, it, <laughs> he, he called on you, Patrick. Yes, yeah. Patrick. Yeah, I know, but I'm waiting because I'm, I'm usually interrupted right before. Oh, so. Oh. Um. I think there would be that many people in the street, and I think it would be people who are of the affiliation of Charlie and of Alex, who would be out there celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> but I would, I would be willing to bet that there are enough sick fucking people. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Mute. If, when you do that, mute, because the problem is it cuts down on 
Patrick's uh, microphone. For some reason, it mute starts muting him a little bit, and so he gets the sound goes down. That's the only reason. So, yeah. Hey, anyway. I was going to try and smoke this, uh, but uh, it's uh, it's cannabis uh, cream. Oh, I see. Okay. It's hard. It's hard to roll it into a joint. Uh, yeah, I know. Anyway, go continue, Patrick. Well, I don't know where it stopped. You you were saying oh, that the, people like Alex and and Charlie would be dancing in the streets if yeah, Trump. I, I do think that there's enough people out there, not necessarily you two, but there are enough sick people out there that are so hateful of Trump that they would celebrate the death of him. And you know, I mean, to me, it 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 just it's sickening. To think that somebody would celebrate the death of our own president, whether you like him or not. Okay. I mean, to begin with, we're making a lot of assumptions here that we would be. I don't think that I would. I think if Trump died, I would be respectful. Right. Yeah. I didn't say you particularly, Alex. I said of your beliefs. You and Charlie do not like him. You guys talk shit about him constantly. I know Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro would be in the streets dancing. That he would be. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> you know, did you see him in uh, in The Irishman? I don't know if he can dance yeah. anymore. Oh, uh, you know, I mean, he can with CGI. With CGI, they have to CGI. <laughs> I can't dancing. get over that scene where he's kick, kicking the guy. It looks like he can barely get his leg up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, holy shit, Marty, put somebody else in that fucking thing. Yeah. It was like, it was just, it looked at my mother going, getting up and down the stairs. Come on. Wow. Alex, I don't know why I have to ask you about that. I don't know how they, I don't mean wow. to get off topic. You should go was, ahead. That, was Patrick done? I think. Were you, were done, Patrick? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done. The only thing I was just thinking is maybe I should have my doctor do some CGI and I could walk. That would be nice. Hey. That'd Did you see that exoskeleton thing they invented, and uh, pe and people are walking there? Yeah, uh, you try to get in that motherfucker. Mm. It take forever. I had one. It mm. wasn't robotic, but it was, and it took everything that I had to get into it. And by then, you you just too fucking tired. So yeah. It's by the way, by the way, by, by the way, somebody mentioned uh, Forbin Colossus mentioned that Trump celebrated the death of John McCain. Yeah, he did. Yeah, you're right. He, he was he happy did. about that a little bit. Yeah. You know what? To celebrate That's anybody's hard. death yeah. is bad karma. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, people that you don't. Know, here's a question. I don't. I would never want something bad to happen. Did you ever? But say, Alex, if you, if you got news from somebody you're like you really didn't like, I wouldn't be happy. But isn't it sometimes it's like thank God it's not me though. <laughs> like, well, know, no. Like, if if <laughs> tomorrow something horrible and and um, God forbid it doesn't happens to Trump, um, yes. uh, 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 I don't think that I would uh, I would in any way celebrate that or feel. I mean, I wouldn't no. cry over it. You yeah, know, okay, I wouldn't go wouldn't that far, but I certainly, you know, I mean, I wouldn't uh, be jumping for joy, yeah. mainly because I'd have to deal with Pence as president of the United States. So, you know, yes, uh, Jason. I would have loved to have been there when they were telling him what he needed to say after Iran bombed those bases in Iraq, when he was like, Oh, they bombed our bases, but it looks like they're standing down. So, <laughs> you know, that does just well, that's the way it did not seem like a Trump thing to that's, do. No, no, that's the way he's been. You know, when they shot uh, oh, down you, the two hundred million dollars, when you they turned off, us. not when they shot the two hundred million dollar drone down, and he said, "Look, there was no loss of life. I'm not going to bomb a thing and and kill 150 people." Uh, you know, because of a two hundred million dollar drone, he j he wasn't going to do well, it. I felt and that he's was he's made that same kind of decision several times in the past. <clears throat> Except this time, he killed somebody. Uh, no, he he took out Baghdadi. He took out this guy. This guy was a bad player. He was a bad guy. No, and wait a minute. He was he, a bad he guy. He was your. He was our bad guy. But you know, it's the old saying: the one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. Freedom fighter. Yep. You yeah, know, it well, depends. It depends. Has got to go no, down. It depends what side you're on. Okay. Well, and to to I'm his people, to side. his people, he was a hero. You, you know. You really and, and, but but what I can't what I can't abide by these countries at all. 
Exactly. All right. Yeah. Well, you heard what Trump said. He says we're self-sufficient uh, uh, with fuel. So then why well, do we well, care about here, the metal? Here's the thing that bothers exactly. me. That's true. That bothers me most of all is the incessant lying that's been going on over yeah. this by the Trump administration. Uh, the Lies. fact, no, the fact that that they don't can't come out with a consistent story of why they did it. They keep saying, oh, he's planning on bombing some embassies. Well, what guy in another country who's an adversary of the United States has isn't planning on bombing an That's embassy? We're him. probably planning on bombing some of their embassies. Yes, That's Patrick. Why you and that's why well, you should that's why they should then them. kill us Can they come okay over here and kill us i mean if in fact if in fact let's just say and i'll get to you in a second patrick if in fact they did attempt to kill trump would you say well that was fair because uh, he was uh, out to get them no because uh, we protect our uh, people better than that guy did. no 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 that's you not know, the that point i'm making i'm giving you a hypothetical is situation the king of carpets what so there's another that, guy who wants to get into the, into the carpet business everybody's you know in what? the carpet business but you know what hey you know what let's take out the king phil hey <laughs> drive down the street <laughs> there's 30 the guys take him out yeah. so that the other people have a chance i mean basically that's what it's like hey. uh, phil's the king carpet muncher you know uh well, and i'm good at it <laughs> yeah. And uh, no, uh, you know okay. What? I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to Phil. Yeah, I don't want anything bad to happen to Patrick, and he's had his hand up for about a minute and a half, and you know yeah. he could get an embolism. Yes, <laughs> Patrick. Um, did you say that they have been planning is good enough for me? That that's a good enough reason for me, and you know you had brought up. What if they would attack us? Remember, again, this was a general, not an elected official. So if they were to take out a congressperson or the president or the vice president, that is totally different than if they were to take out the uh, chief of the joint chief of staff or one of our, you know, general. It's a different level. Mm. So... We took him out. Whether or not there's any provable evidence that he was planning an attack, who cares? He was a fucking piece of shit that needed to die, so he did. Now he be can't be die. Because, you know, I, I'm really not trying to defend it. I'm just playing the devil's advocate. But he needed to die because your government told you so? Uh, you know, uh, they said, uh, Trump said that uh, they can't give up their intel on how they found out uh, about these things, so he's there's only so much uh, he, 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 he also he was behind he the protest at the us, embassy. He can give it to Congress. Well, yeah, and, then and the then, Congress will leak it. Yeah, Congress I, even said that the the briefing that they gave was ridiculous. They had two different Republicans even come out and say this is the worst thing we have ever seen come out on a military briefing. It was ridiculous. They, they didn't said. hear what they wanted to hear. You know, uh, they, they wanted to hear. Some, they wanted uh, to hear. Wait a minute. Let me let me Rand let me say Paul something, Jason. True. Phil, they wanted to hear something, and they heard nothing. Okay. Rand, he all they the got, all they got, were these vague references to, oh well, he was up to no good, and he was going to do something. Actually, the truth of the fact was, Suleimani was in Iraq, and he wasn't planning anything. He was just there to take care of some business, and then go back to Iran. You know, I think he was flying commercial. Yeah, he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't going there for military purposes. He wasn't going there for military purposes. He missed that flight. <laughs> wasn't going there for military purposes or anything like that. He was just going there oh, to sure. no to take care of some stuff, and then he was going back to Iran. You don't think he directed the uh, the attack on the embassy? You don't think that he was the Which guy embassy? behind? Uh, uh, no, 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 no was. I that's don't. That's the embassy that he was planning to attack. Who got right. injured? Who got hurt? Oh, yeah. uh, nobody got hurt because uh, it was a protest Trump at didn't an embassy. let it, it was a turn protest. into a Benghazi. It was a attack. protest at an embassy. Yeah, it was a protest where they were breaking down the doors and burning down the place. On, on oh, an well, outer shell wall. Well, because they didn't get through because uh, Trump sent in 100 Marines and they defended it. So yeah, it wasn't they another Benghazi. 100 Marines like two days later? That's how long Benghazi. it took to get them. I think that what Trump did 
was unwise only because of the uh, the uh, uh, results of what's happening. I think that uh, we are not safer now because he did that. I think we are only in more danger than we were. I think that the Iranians are going to come to the table and start negotiating. That's what I think is going to happen. Well, that's we you, a, yeah, and you plan. were really right we about the have, people we of Iran weren't going to celebrate we Suleimani. Didn't have to come to the table. We had already been at the table. Yeah, that table sucked. Why? Because that, that, that was the table that paid for the bombs. Now. That was the table that paid for those missiles that uh, Phil, landed Phil, nobody in Iraq paid City. for anything. The yeah, money that the Iranians got was their money back. It wasn't their money. It was the Shah's money. No, it was their money. The world court. It was Iranian The world and court. You don't give money to terrorists. The world you know, court. The world court said to and return it. Wait a minute. Let me hold on a second, Phil. Uh, J- Jason, didn't the world court say return it? The world court said return. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and then what? So you're saying you're better than the world court? So yeah, you're better, I, definitely. You're better than the judicial system. Much so better. That, that's what a terrorist says, Phil. Yeah, that's I'm the so terrorist good. Thing. He's good I'm at so that good. and carpet. I would never return that money. Mm-hmm. I would have spent it on camera equipment. So see, yeah. that's what a terrorist would say. <laughs> Except for yeah. they're spending on bombs. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, this is all, I don't know. I, I, I uh, God knows, I, uh, the, uh, the cancer will get me, hopefully, and I don't have to put up with this oh anymore. No, no, don't pure say cancer. That. You think you can vote soon? Huh? You can vote soon, November. This is going to be an exciting year, yeah. I think. I can because vote soon. I was able to vote soon after I was eighteen. Come on, you know. But I think this is going to be an exciting twelve months leading, uh, eleven months leading up to the. Oh election. yeah, no, you know what it's going to be? It's going to be the most. I, I, all these networks are going to be so ginning this thing up. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, ha, let me, let me, yes, Jason, and then I want to ask uh, I, I just, Josh just a couple real quickly. Questions. I did want to say I went to a union meeting the other day, and the majority of the people in my union are Trump voters. I don't understand them. I don't get it. I did, <laughs> it just boggles my mind. But they were all saying, like, I can't vote for this idiot. You know, and they were saying how, you know, they admitted how they voted for him originally, but it's like, you know, now I can't vote for this idiot. So That's that gave me a, that gave media. me a little bit of heart because my county, mm-hmm. Macomb County, has always mentioned every presidential election and what's going to happen in Macomb County. So at least I saw some union members turn around and say, you know, I voted for him the first time. There's no fucking way I can do it again. Uh, let, me ask, let, me, uh, let me ask, let me, let me, let me ask. Oh, we lost uh, Kathleen. Yeah, but she left. She got shot by. She probably got taken out. I'll I'll let her stay there, frozen. However, in that position because it's kind of fun. Uh, yeah. Um, uh. The um, uh, and plus we only have about uh, eleven minutes left. Uh, uh, I, I just think that. Um, now, what was I going to say? I forgot completely. Oh yeah. Oh, this is what I was going to say. Uh, J- Josh, you 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 work pretty much in blue collar circumstances right with the with the paint company and everything like that right yeah for the most part would you say the people you work with because they are uh, uh, are were, voted for trump last time or uh it it's fairly mixed i mean you know we have a lot of uh i mean the plants about 50 50 you know black males and white males so i mean i most of the black males i i don't think voted for trump and uh, uh i mean uh, of the of the white employees then it was probably split from there mm-hmm. maybe i mean I, I think a lot of people did for sure well the question uh, i'm wanting to ask is that hearing what jason said about the people he works with who were basically trump voters who said now they can't find themselves voting for him again i was just wondering if you felt that found that same sentiment among Trump voters in your in your uh, Ohio, uh, in Ohio. I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, for one, we're s- such a human resources driven large corporation that political discussions rarely take place. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. From my experience, but of his hardcore people around here, I mean, they're they're not going to change their mind really, no matter what. Yeah. I mean. You know, I, I mean, he could be on videotape breaking the law 
law and saying that he was breaking the law, and then it, hmm. it wouldn't matter, you know? I mean, so I'm not real sure about yeah, really. I mean, I, guess me with I, us I, too, I don't think it's going to do as well in Ohio as it did last time. Bill's out of the seven people, hmm? out of the seven people here, how many honestly are registered to vote and vote? I have never missed I all opportunity to vote. Yeah. Do you vote, Alex? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I'm only two blocks away from the voting for my school, the vote. Yeah. No, yeah. I, mine's right right around the block. Like right. half so, a block so you're, away. All, you're all registered to vote, and you all yeah. vote. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, that's, that's... I think I have missed one election in my lifetime, and that was basically to appoint a you know, dog catcher. Uh, Alex uh, missed John Quincy Adams, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, Phil. Thank you. No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> By the way, I, I blanked out uh, the picture of, uh, of um, uh, Schmoody Definitely. because she, she left, and uh, we, uh, you know, we feel that it's important that I, you know, that I don't have her looking folks like that. You know, it's, what do they do? Turn the tr uh, electricity off in Tracy uh, about this time? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if she just hung up because she was tired of playing the game tonight, or whether she lost her signal and then decided not to come. I'm back. sure she lost her signal. Probably. Yeah, she's very good about staying around to the end. So, anyway, if you can listen to us, Kathleen. Sorry to see you go. Yeah. Anyway, um, because you're always very funny and and. But uh, and nerf fighting, um, and we're just happy to have a woman here. We're just happy. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. there's too much testosterone. Well, not not anymore, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> testosterone is bad. Testosterone. Uh, testosterone. Um, I just uh, you know I just uh, think that we're uh, uh, it, that that it, who knows what's going to happen in this election, uh, but. Uh, for those people like your people, Jason, uh, who say they voted for Talk him last Mexicans? time, uh, you know, no, 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 the people that you work with who oh. said they voted for Trump and they're not going to vote for him again. The question is, uh, if we hand them a mediocre candidate on the Democratic side, are they going to vote for them? That's the question. The, the biggest thing, like... I, I, or are they I just really, going to stay home? You know. Yeah. You know, me personally, I do think that it is a woman's turn to be president just because it's been so long and never had a woman president. You know, a part of me feels that. But the other part of me feels the guys that I work with, if there's a woman, they will absolutely not vote for her. I think they should get a German shepherd president. Uh, you know, there hasn't been a German shepherd. You know, why not get yeah, that's, you know, that's uh, the only qualification is uh, that they got mammary glands. Well, you, you know? know, the thing is, I got to tell you that that uh, I, I, yes, I, I think I think it's time that we have never we, been president. It's time that we did have a woman for president. But you're never going to get a woman president until you get somebody running that engenders the kind of uh, 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 backing leadership that somebody like. I mean, Obama was a stealth candidate. <clears throat> That's why, That's why a black like man got elected as president. She's middle of the road. She's good looking. Yeah. She kicks a ass. She's hot. You know. Yeah, definitely. You, you know, I want a president I can jerk off to. I mean, while I can still jerk off. You know. Tulsi would do it for you. The Tulsi would do I, it I for I don't me. think you lose the jerk off ability uh, based on the type of operation you've got. Uh, no, it does. It can, uh, for a while, make you somewhat uh, flaccid. Uh, it, it, it'll work even flaccid, trust me. You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> I've never wanted to have an appendage that waves in the wind, but I think I'm about to get one, you know, yeah. so. Uh, but it's only hey. good for pissing. Hmm? It's only good for pissing. Yeah, and it may not be good, very neighbors. good for that either, you know, <laughs> so. But uh, anyway. They'll give you a, a catheter. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I'm so uh, so sorry that, uh, you know, that, that, that it's come to this. I just think that the Democrats have to come up with. I, I don't. I, the only woman that is feasible, Jason, is Elizabeth Warren. And, <laughs> and I don't think she could win against Trump. 
I think she could because I think just the party has to get behind her and we need yeah. to learn like the Republicans do to fall in line instead of she, fall in love. She's so non-genuine, <clears throat> you know, I mean, even uh, and, and Trump is him. genuine. Oh, yeah. Trump uh, says uh, what it's on uh, his no, mind. That, and bullshit, Phil. That is the said. most ungenuine person in, a, in the world. Well, he's like a woman. Patrick. Okay. I, I'm going to say, Phil. Trump is not genuine. I mean, come on. <laughs> he might be genuine. <laughs> He's genuine. the real deal. <laughs> no, but no, no. Uh, 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 you know, just saying, well, well, you know, well, he he lives up to what he said he was going to do. Well, that's scary. You know. Not for me. Well, Hitler I, must. I, Hitler, I him to then by your by your standards, Hitler must have been a great guy because he did everything he said he was going to do. Yeah, but he did it for the other guys. No, you know, he, he wasn't making America great again. No, oh, no, no, he was making Germany great again. You know, yeah. and I'm sure there was some statement to that effect at the time. It. Yeah, and huh? he almost did it. Yeah, he no, he, he, what he did is he brought Germany to its knees, and I hope that we don't have the same problem here. You know, I mean, let's face it, this whole thing with Iran, and be honest about it, Phil, was a tactic meant to dissuade us from thinking about the impeachment and to slow down the impeachment. Well, uh, they, they've they already slowed down the impeachment. Uh, they haven't delivered the papers. Well, they will be. Uh, they are going to be delivered next week. Yeah, uh, because uh, there's been a lot of people pressuring Pelosi to do no, it. No, not, not, not that, but because they think that they can go over there and get at least some kind of trial going where they are going to be able to, uh, you know, bring be forward uh, witnesses and things like that. Yeah, but I, I look at this impeachment as being so phony and so does Trump. Trump doesn't even, you know, uh, let it bother him. Oh, are you he's kidding me? He's, oh, he's bothered, bothered every minute of every day, Phil. He's sweating it bad. Yeah. Uh, there's no way he's he's leaving the job. It, well, uh, it, uh, no, because you've got a complicit Senate, you know, that isn't going to listen to the facts. They're just going to listen to... What'd you say? Like what, the, what'd you say, Jason? I said, and that's what Nancy Pelosi was saying. Now, if they do it the way that they're saying, they're going to be part of the biggest cover-up in American history. Yep. Of no crime. There was yeah. no crime. True. You know, you show me the high crimes and misdemeanors. Uh, you know, oh, it, it, I didn't it, let you uh, interview the witnesses that uh, had privileged information. Oh, that's his right. right. Well, the, you know, first of all, first of all, wait a minute. And I, I got to say this quickly because we're running, we're running out of time. But Trump said that I want to be able to get my side of the story out there. And now that we're having this trial, he's doing everything to prevent his side of the story from getting out there. Trial hasn't started. How do you know that? No, I know that because you, uh, uh, Mitch, uh, Mitch McConnell, I think, has said um, that. Um, uh, he, it, he's he's going to uh, help the president the pre get his, president uh, get his way. Right. Yeah, he's right. going to work with the White House. He's going to work with the White House. Well, you don't he's work with anybody on this. Uh, you put on a trial. You listen to witnesses, and then you let everybody make their mind up. If you work with the White House, maybe he'll get some witnesses. You know, uh, uh, if he works uh, with bullshit, them. Phil. Could, bullshit, Phil. As much as you want to guarantee, you're, you're so. looking at a negative meaning. Oh, I see. You're not looking at the at the positive. Oh no, part no, of because I'm said. I'm I'm completely in Trump's corner now. I think he's the finest president we've ever had. I understand. And Thank I'm, you very much. I'm 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 <laughs> sold on him. Another four years. God, give him another twelve. Yeah. You know. So so the stock market went up eleven thousand points since he became president. And that means the, absol that means absolutely that means absolutely nothing. That means absolutely nothing to the average American. And help me. Unemployment, it. but not your uh, home income. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you uh, know, it, it tricked lost down. my job. I mean, you're in a I'm union. You're in a union, so you know you're stuck with what they negotiate for you. I played the theme too loud. I'm I mean, sorry. It took us a year and a half to get our agreement because we had a Republican in office. Yeah. Thank anyway, God. hey, listen. There, there goes the theme song. Uh, you know, I'm all out of here. Uh, next week, I don't know what's going to happen next week. I have a half day trial, so on Friday. So I think I will do a show Friday night. And I think I'll be here on Tuesday. I don't think I don't have anything that's sticking up my ass that day, so I'll be here. But I'll be here on and off uh, as we go th forward with this thing, depending upon how fatigued I am and things like that. So, But I thank you all for being here tonight. I thank and all the people. We all who... wish you the best. Well, uh, don't worry. Uh, this is uh, uh, Yes. 
Uh, there's our there's our new president right there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you're going to vote for a clown, vote Joker for president. Okay. Yeah, but that the hair wasn't orange. Hey, was uh, uh, yeah. Uh, he, let's give a, a big round of applause for to to uh, uh, Phil. And there's uh, Charlie, and there's Josh, and there's um, um, uh, uh, Tony, and there's uh, um, uh, 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 what's his name? Um, Jason. 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 Well, I was going to get to Jason. I was forgetting Patrick for a moment. Uh, 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 J- and Jason. Uh, uh, I think I got everybody, didn't I? Yeah, you've all been to. Oh, and, and of course, Chris, uh, Kathleen, who who we Kathleen lost Mom. there at some point. I don't know what She's happened. Anyway, everybody, give a big uh, wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye back at you. Okay, here we go. There they go. There goes the citizen panel. Off into the night, perhaps going over to talk with uh, Jack Bishop, who's on next over most of this gab net. Uh, I'll see you again uh, on uh, Tuesday. Uh, right after nothing because we oh no we don't have any show on Tuesday at all okay so we'll be on 10 o'clock eastern time Tuesday night yeah you know the drill Uh, and in the meantime as always if you see her tell her I love her okay bye bye everybody see you later